Be the Talk, Episode 178, featuring Scott Ginsberg. Welcome to Be the Talk. We go behind the talk seven days a week for tips and techniques to help you change the world. I'm Nathan Eckel, and a talker myself, I'm interviewing others who change the world with their talk. You can too, even if you've never given a talk before. Let's get started with today's show. We are live with Scott Ginsberg. Scott, are you ready to talk? Absolutely. Let's do it. Scott Ginsberg is an author, speaker, strategist, filmmaker, publisher, inventor, songwriter, and world record holder. He also wears his name tag 24-7, even to bed. And he's wearing it now. Scott Ginsberg, welcome to the talk. Thank you very much. So you are the name tag guy. Your your uh, website is even nametagscott.com. Your TEDx St. Louis talk is called What's in a Name Tag? And I love that, like me, you were doing all this networking stuff, pounding the pavement, thinking that you were working so effectively, and until one day that you just kept wearing the name tag by doing something that nobody else was doing, and you saw the power of it. Scott, please take us behind the talk. Sure. So it, um, I mean, it started as, as most things in college, sort of a, an experiment to meet girls that failed. And, uh, so instead of meeting girls, I made friends, which, uh, not exactly the same, but good enough. So, and I started making all these new friends with people who, because of wearing a name tag, they, they saw me differently. And there was something in the way that we interacted that was unique. So I made this vow that I would do it forever. Like, permanently. And that was 18 years ago. Um, and so <laughs> this, this whole journey that started with, um, this goofy little sticker turned into, um, a viral idea on campus and then a viral idea on the internet. And then eventually his career as a writer and a speaker and et cetera, et cetera. Um, so all of this happened over the course of uh, 2000 to uh, up until today. And I remember for the, the Ted talk that I gave specifically, um, which is 2014, I got an email in 2000, I guess the beginning of 2013. And some guy said, Hey, I remember hearing about you like 10 years ago. Do you want to give a Ted talk? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Um, and that's how it went down. And it was a great experience. And it kind of proves my theory that if you want to be successful, just do something great 10 years ago. I, I almost no, don't know what to say to that, Scott, except that this sounds like an mid 80 plot to a mid 80 Tom Hanks comedy. Yeah. Like the burbs or so I will wear a name. Did you, was it dramatic when you, when you made the vow? Was there a thunderclap or uh, did no. the earth shake or, or nothing? You just kept doing it. <laughs> no, there was, there was no drama. There was no grandiosity. There was no music in the background. Unfortunately, life is not a movie <laughs> like I, I would like it to be. Although, you know, I enjoy telling the story as if it were the, um, quote, inciting incident, as the screenwriters say, at the point of no mm -hmm. return and the, and the flavor scene, as uh, as Robert McKee would call it in the first two minutes of the movie. Uh, that that was not the case when I actually did it. But I mean, your your life uh, took a turn. It took a trajectory. Right. That you can never go back to after that day. I mean, so even though there was no physical harm risk to you, you uh, figuratively burned your ships that day by wearing, yeah. I mean, the name tag, it's not on you when you shower. I don't mean to be, you no, know, it too is. intrusive. It is. Yeah, I, I, I'm not. I'm not sure I burned the ships on day one because it was just a sticker. But when I got my tattoo, I think that's when I oh. really really burn the ships for real. Okay. Well, the tattoo, I, I, I didn't want to ask any more uncomfortable questions. The tattoo. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Okay. So, and, and I, I wasn't aware until I asked that the world record had to do with the name tag. So is, did the tattoo come into play for that? Does the tattoo count for the, the world record or, or what were the criteria? Well, here's the thing about world records. So uh, the Guinness Book has rejected my application multiple times. Oh. So I, I know. Um, for many, they have a lot of reasons for why they – I know, bastards. So <laughs> one of the reasons is that I break my own record every day, which is, actually makes a lot of sense. Uh, the other reason is that uh, not enough other people are going for my same record in which I would beat them. You know, So um, – so it's not listed in that way. It is in Ripley's, believe it or not. And 
there is no one else who has been doing it as long as I have. So it's like, it's like just true enough not to be a lie. And the, the irony is most people not only assume that I am in the Guinness Book of World Records, people have told me they've seen me <laughs> in the Guinness Book of World Records. And I've checked. I'm not in there. So so I love when they get the story wrong. And I'm just like, yeah, sure, world record holder, whatever you want, pal. All right. So yesterday I was talking with uh, with Paul Sloan uh, out of England about confirmation bias. I think when you're, yeah. when you're trying to convince somebody and you go back the second or third or fourth time and then you just give up, that, that's an example yeah. of confirmation bias when they're for telling sure. you that they yeah, they saw your name in the Guinness book and you're like dude just check again no i saw it no, that's what like, look, that, that's what paul and i were talking about yesterday talk universe yeah people uh <laughs> people see what they need to see and they remember the past the way they need to Oh my word! I, I'm trying. I'm furiously trying to think of like movie references. There's probably too many uh, that that we could go, and I, I fortunately yeah. can't think of any. So that's good. Other than like the Burbs or something, which is I think what I saw when I when I referenced yeah. uh, Tom Hanks uh, before. My gosh! Well, um, I, I I love this because I was talking to another Briton, uh, Rob Brown, yesterday, who was the networking expert, and it was like this this idea: you have to do something different. You right. have to you have to be noticed. You have to be on brand. You have to find that thing. Uh, and and what I found is a you know as a emerging podcaster is that you know people didn't necessarily want me to be the leadership expert uh, in my city, but they love you know the the, the universe loves that I'm a podcaster interviewing another branded speaker seven days a week. So I, I think that yeah. uh, that when you find something that other people, that it's a fit with other people's current conception of you, or if you reinvent yourself so dramatically and uh, and 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 um, uh, with enough proof that it's convincing, then it starts working. And for you, it was as simple as breaking the ice, saying, hey, my name is Scott. And and so so that day that you started doing that, obviously it was the uh, that party and, and the little lark that you were uh riding out on but you saw something and it clicked for you and how not that you knew that you would be doing this the rest of your your life scott but uh what what was it about the the change of the way that you noticed people were treating you that that, that caused you to want to do it again and again well i think there was two changes and i think it's it's the same idea on both sides of the interaction which was seeing and being seen so it's it's not like prior to wearing a name tag, I was this invisible, you know, loner who had no friends. Like, no, I had this amazing childhood, had tons of friends. It was awesome. College was lonely and it was a struggle like it is for a lot of people. Um, so when I put this sticker on, I definitely felt seen in a way that was new and uh, it was different. You know, in, in college, college is about consuming alcohol, doing drugs and having sex. So um, because I wasn't doing a lot of that um, – there is a tendency for isolation when you're not participating in, in certain activities. So now all of a sudden I'm wearing a name tag and no one cares that I'm sober. No one cares that uh, I'm not smoking <laughs> pot. They, they just want to say hi. So it's like, oh, wow, people treat me as a person and not a preference. And then what happened as a result is – I saw them differently and I treated them differently and it became this very sort of Martin Buber-esque um, I vow interpersonal dynamic that was transformative. And I, I may not have realized how transformative it was at the time, but something that was unnameable was happening and I trusted it and th th that was the end of it. I just kept going. We've been enjoying this uh, riveting and fun conversation, just plain fun conversation with Scott Ginsburg. He's the name tag guy, and he has been wearing a name tag for the last 10 years all the time, eating, sleeping, showering, waking. It's and, uh, not not to be a jerk. It's 18 years. 18 years. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost double what a not to be a jerk, but I almost uh, took your streak and cut it in half. So that's not okay. that's not particularly cool. But we've been enjoying this conversation. Talk Universe, I hope that each one of you can find that light bulb moment that happened for Scott, that's happened for me with this podcast. I hope that you can. I know Scott does, too. I hope we hope that you can find that new thing that you're going to bring uh, into the universe. And in a moment. We're going to be right back with Scott Ginsburg, the name tag guy for the Blitz round. People ask, how could I start a seven day a week podcast? 
It's because of what I've learned from my mentors. Some of the best mentors in history aren't around anymore. They've left hours of one-on-one mentoring behind in their books. Each month at Classics on Tap, I record a new chapter from a classic business book to help you make a difference. Download your first chapter at ClassicsOnTap.com. And we are back with the name tag guy, Scott Ginsberg. It is time for the Blitz Round. We're going to pivot over to Talk Universe, and I am going to ask you a series of either or questions related to the prep and the performance of your TEDx St. Louis talk. Are you ready, Scott? Absolutely. First question, were you selected to speak or did you apply? And I think you already answered this. So, Yeah, I got, I got an email from the guy who said, you got to do this thing. Great. Well, hey, keep wearing that name tag Talk Universe or do something different for, for 10 years and then you might get invited as well. Uh, are you a memorizer, an improviser, or a blender, Scott? Uh, blender. How did that work for you? Great. Um, I mean, I think that's shifted a little bit over the years. I, I probably memorized more in the beginning when I didn't have uh, a depth of experience and a trust in my own abilities. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think over time, um, I allow myself to have more blank time built into my performance so I can allow things to come up and trust that um, I can read the room and say what needs to be said. And at the same time, you know, I know where I'm going to get laughs and applauses. So, you know, you got to tap into the, you got to play the hits as they say, and then, you know, throw in, throw in the new ballads every once in a while. Scott, you're a funny guy and you do a lot of uh, talking from the stage. So is, I mean, is there an element of improv or comedy or, you know, in, in uh, obviously in your, in your persona, your personal brand a little bit, but when you actually give talks, is it, you know, is there a stand up al- element to that? Would you would you say or or just trying to to be uh, engaging? All of the above. I mean, comedy is the great digestive system for information. So if I'm about to make a point, I, I try to go through the side door by allowing the room to relax and smile and have fun, and then sneak my my little ideas in there because I think it it creates a more fertile soil for my ideas to grow if they've already left before I start talking about the fact that we're all going to die or something like that. Scott, that was brilliant. That was, that was a weird owl worthy metaphor. If you don't mind me saying so. Sure. Comedy is the digestive system of the brain or, or of learning. What, what, what was that again? (laughs) I I just made that up. We've got it on tape. So I'm going to, I'm going to put that on a quote card. Do it. (laughs) And I'm going to put your name tag on it. Good. <laughs> uh, what, well, you know, this is the uh, cut for time question. What, was there a, a part of your talk that that had to be cut out, or or was it just par for the course with the the blend? I mean, TED talks are eighteen minutes, and I, I'm used to talking for multiple hours. So <laughs> I was I was cutting and cutting and cutting all night before. All like I was up at four in the morning because I had an early slot. I was cutting nonstop because. Because like if you go over that mark, the TED people like have that death, <laughs> that Daffy Duck cane and they like yank you. The vaudeville this, hook. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is that, yeah, right. And, and there's that giant <laughs> clock that is like the, the Damoclean sword just hanging there. So I, I cut everything. Uh, what, what was the most unexpected, strange or just plain weird thing that happened during or right before your talk? So I got a really good one. So, uh, so for, for Ted talks, I, I didn't know this because I skipped the rehearsal because my flight was late. So, uh, I do this for a living. I don't need to rehearse. I'm fine. So I didn't go to the the sound check and the rehearsal. So I get there that morning and I have a couple hours before I go. And he's like, yeah, you know, here's, here's the stage. Here's where you walk, blah, blah, blah. And there's this big red circle that is, you know, part of the Ted logo that's right in the middle of the stage. It's like, uh, like carpet, you mm-hmm. know, and it's, um, you know, it's a couple meters in diameter. It's pretty, pretty large. And so I stood on it and the guy goes, okay, so that's where you'll be standing. I'm like, you mean like, this is my mark for the camera. This is when I walk on, he goes, no, 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 you, you give your speech from the red dot. <laughs> and, and I'm like, really? He goes, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's how we do Ted talks. I go, oh, cool. So I like to move around, uh, and I uh, I don't really know where I'm going to end up during my presentation. It's not really choreographed, but I, I move around. So uh, what happens if I step off the red dot? And the guy goes, nothing. 
And I said, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, right on. So I, <laughs> it's gone from absolutism to relativism in, in the blink of an eye. <laughs> well, because I, I think what happens is uh, nobody challenges that assumption because they're <laughs> Because they're probably nervous and that maybe they don't do it professionally and, you know, Ted is this big intimidating brand, blah, blah, blah. And I get it. And I'm like, <laughs> I, I don't give a shit. This is what I'm doing. So I I started my presentation and I started on the dot just because the camera needed a mark. So I want to be respectful of that. But then, <laughs> uh, you know, a few seconds into my talk, I like take a step off the mat. And I, I swear in like the front row where all the staff was, there was an audible gas. <laughs> There, there was like head slaps and they're like, Oh my God. Like it was like the munch uh, scream. It was the, the painting. Uh. Yeah. It was like that. It, it was like, you would think I was like Indiana Jones in the last crusade <laughs> stepping over that, that last stone. And then, so the best part, it, it's like these series of moments to like put a, a fun little bow on that, this whole Ted experience when I was finished and I was, uh, I had some books. I was signing books and just talking to people and stuff like that. Like the number of people that came up to me and like, not, Hey, I enjoyed your story or, Hey, that was a, that was a beautiful, I, or I'm inspired, blah, blah, blah. They were just like, you stepped off the red dot. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I know. Like I'm such a <laughs> rebel. I know. Like I'm a hero. And, and so honestly, this real, this story really has nothing to do with me. This is about some sort of marketplace assumption within the Ted brand, which I have great respect for, that people have this like reverence for a, 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 a red carpeted dot. And I, I just I don't even I don't even know what to say about that. It blew me away. I almost don't know what to say right now, other than if you want to check out this this shocking controversial moment of right you know it, it should be nc17 because scott it's, the name tag guy steps off the dot if you want to actually see this i'm going to tell you where you can go to see it go to our show notes page and you can watch scott's talk what's in a name tag and we will have a link for it or you can just bypass the whole thing type it longhand into youtube and see it that way but if you go to our website you will also be able to connect with scott at name tag scott.com or you could type that out right now <laughs> outside of all of that we'll have links to you and either way and uh, in a moment we're going to be back with name tag scott ginsburg for the final word of advice for you talk universe everyone wants to change the world but not everyone knows the first step before you can change the world with your talk it has to be selected so grab the templates timelines and tools that i use to get my talk selected at be the talk.com. And we're back with a final word of advice for Talk Universe from Scott Ginsburg. Wow, it's a lot of pressure. Uh, <laughs> my my final word of advice, which is like my life philosophy, is um, expect nothing but appreciate everything. Well put. Thank you so much, name tag Scott Ginsburg, for coming on the talk today, sharing your brilliance and your wisdom with Talk Universe. Thanks. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for listening to Be The Talk. For tips and resources to help you change the world, go to be the talk.com. See you tomorrow.